Hello, hello, and welcome once again to another edition of a Beatles program that we call Things We Said Today. This is a weekly show, or at least we try to make it a weekly show, uh, concerning what's going on in the world of the Beatles newswise. I'm Ken Michaels, one of the co-hosts of the show, known for the syndicated Beatles radio program called Every Little Thing, and I'm being joined by my partner in crime here, Mr. Beatles examiner himself, Steve Marinucci. Hello, Ken. Hi, everybody. On today's show, we're going to talk about something that just leaked out yesterday, although by the time this gets posted, it'll be a week old, probably. Yeah. But it concerns uh, Ringo Starr and a brand new exhibit that will premiere at the Grammy Museum in Los Angeles, starting on June the 12th. And uh, you just broke the news yesterday. We're mm -hmm. doing this on uh, March the 7th. So why don't we uh, tell the folks what we know about it? Why don't well, you start, Steve? The story uh, is basically that the, the exhibit is called Ringo, Peace, and Love. It'll open June 12th, and it'll, it's scheduled to run through November, although the Grammy Museum has been known to extend things longer. Hmm. The But what's really, and, you know, the press release had all the usual superlatives, all this unprecedented, you know, look at all aspects of Ringo's life and, and you know, the usual type of stuff. But in this case, uh, it really is true because I, I guess you could say this is another one of Ringo's efforts in how to not write your own autobiography. <laughs> I was I thinking mean, that, too. And he was, you know, he's been singing, he's been doing the song, you know, various songs. But this actually is something really, really nice. And um, they're going to cover all aspects of his career, both before, during, and after the Beatles. And the list of some of the items that they mentioned in the press release yesterday actually it kind of blew my mind. I, I kind of opened my eyes and I went, really? I mean, he's going to have the the drum kits from the Ed Sullivan Show and Shea Stadium, mm -hmm. which I, I really didn't think either of those things were still available to him, but I guess he I guess he's got them. Uh, his Sergeant Pepper outfit, which uh, that's not too much of a surprise. The cape he wore in Help. Yeah. The red jacket he wore on the rooftop concert, which I mean, if you think about that now, it's like it's every you know you got to oh yeah I remember that. Plus, it's going to have that's the kind of that, thing that's burned into people's memories, right? Right. Plus, it's going to have letters, photographs, and documents. I mean, he 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 did that book, uh, um, postcards to the boys, a, a few years ago, and mm. he has you know he has a lot of co correspondence from the Beatles. But one of the really interesting things, and it'll be interesting to see how this plays out, is that it's going to have a section where people can take a drum lesson from Ringo, which which is going to be interesting in itself and you know that was the result of your own wish that you mentioned here on this show <laughs> yes oh yeah ringo, actually you ringo wanted some kind of dvd show. of that ringo, kind ringo listens to the show i'm sure <laughs> <laughs> but this is going to be this is going to be an, uh, an incredible exhibit i have been to the grammy museum a couple of times i've seen the exhibits there. I saw the Lennon exhibit there, and the uh, the Lennon exhibit was really not, was really nice. It had some really nice stuff in it. Some of the stuff in the Lennon exhibit were replicas, like the the pepper jacket. And I, I'm assuming here that all of this stuff that will be available, that will be shown, or hopefully uh, at least most of it will be real and not replicas. Hmm. But the Grammy Museum itself is a wonderful place. It's 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 got it's got um, you know memorabilia from everybody from all walks of music. Um, you can just you know you can turn around and see you know album covers and and all sorts of things and and uh, having and, not okay. been to the Grammy Museum, is it a lot like the the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland? Well, I would I would I th would think the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is probably a little bigger. The Grammy Museum is a a small, relatively small museum. It's um, I think it's three stories. It's located in downtown Los Angeles. It's right around the corner from Staples Center, hmm. um, which I have not been to, but I, I, I know from a, from having been in the area that, yeah, it's right there. I know one of the things they had was one of the, I'm trying to remember now, I believe they had one of the Beatles' first Grammys there, because I remember as we were walking into it last time to see the London exhibit, 
they had it in a glass case, and I just and I kind of went, wow. But it's a really it's a really nice place, and if you're in Los Angeles, it's well worth seeing. Not just when the Ringo thing will be there, but it's fun to see because there's all sorts of music represented. And if you're a music lover, it's a great you know it's just a great place to go. But this is going to be very nice. Ringo has been here before at the museum. He was there in January 2010 where he um, he did a, a question and answer session and he also uh, performed live with Ben Harper, um, which right. uh, that was such a great collaboration with him and Ben Harper. Mm-hmm. And we and we got to see it live and because uh, I was there for that and it was it was a lot of fun. Yeah, that, that was, was just, to promote why not. That was yeah, that was and and uh, I remember bumping into um, I can't uh, Anne Marie um, the the violin player um, bumping into her in the elevator. Unfortunately, Ringo was not with her at the time, but um, we did get to we we did see her uh, very briefly and, and, and say hello to her. But it it was just a, a great it, it was a great show and and uh, it was very intimate. And, and um, there's been, you know, no word yet if Ringo's going to do any kind of live thing, although it's been usually traditional that some kind of thing, whether it's open to the public or not, happens around these kinds of things. Yeah. So we don't know what's going to happen. That has not been announced yet. But in any event, this is going to be a fun thing for people to see. And I, there's there's some real significance here. The real significance is that, for one, Ringo is is out front. Um, this is all about Ringo. It's not, you know, it's more about Ringo than it is about anything else. And that's well. Think, what would you expect it to be on if well, it's a I, Ringo what exhibit? What I mean by that is, I mean traditionally, drummers are in the background, and even you know during the, during the Beatle days, although Ringo was very much. A known a uh, known personality. I don't want to say known quantity, but known personality. He still, you know, uh, he had three other guys that were in front of him, and this is Ringo being out front, being um, celebrated for what he is, not right. for what he w- is with somebody else. It's for what he is, and that's really that's really important. And I'm really glad for him. Uh, I'm really glad that this is happening. I would agree with you there. And I just want to go back to your comment about Ringo saying that he's not going to write his own autobiography. Mm-hmm. And in a way, this ca- this kind of makes up for it. And this is his way of controlling, in a way, what the public sees about him, because it's not strictly about the Beatles. Certainly there's a lot in there about the Beatles. But what um, what I'm most pleased with is the fact that there's supposed to be some artifacts in there about Rory Storm, about his other band, the Raving Texans, mm-hmm. the bands he was in before the Beatles, and he likes to bring up Rory Storm every now and then in his his interviews, and even in his music, in Liverpool Eight, for example, and also his solo career, and right. stuff from the All Star Band tours. So right. it's not strictly about the Beatles, although I will make the point at where, where Ringo's concerned. I mean, who are we to tell him what to do? But he can always self-publish his own autobiography and control what goes into it. Now, there's there is another issue as far as you know information about him. There is a there is a book um, that another writer is doing, whose name hap- happens to also be Star, is Michael Star from the New York Daily News. Mm-hmm. He is writing a biography of Ringo that Ringo has already disowned. Right, and this might be part of a an effort on Ringo's part to not necessarily control it, but to, you know, put information out there, you know, that is quote unquote approved and to, you know, to um, kind of cover for that, whatever um, Michael Starr is doing. And, you mean and take, take the spotlight away from that book? Possibly. Yeah. And uh, I have not seen anything about when that book is coming out. I, I mean, I know, I know Ringo, pounced on it very quickly when for word first broke. Do you know and why? What does he have against the idea of this book coming out on him? That's a good question. I, I My guess is that he got word from a couple of people about the inquiries about the book, and he, you know, wanted to 
pounce on it right away and say, hey, this isn't me, and, you know, wanted to kind of control it right off. The thing is that um, it's, hard, it's hard to to say what people are going to, are going to do about, uh, you know, about uh, things like this and whether they really, you know, how much they're going to care about uh, what uh, is going to happen. So it may be a way, a ways off yet. Yeah, I don't see anything. I don't think, I don't see anything listed here. So that's interesting that it's not even, it's not even listed here yet uh, under uh, upcoming books. So who knows what's going on as far as that goes, but, uh, He's been doing this on his own. I mean, it's obvious he doesn't want to write a book, and I don't think. And the and the the thing with Michael Starr really had nothing to do with, as far as I know, with this. He just does not want to write. He just does not want to settle down with an author and 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 write a book. And that's you know, there are other ways to do it. And he's been doing it musically. That's and that's fine. And and you know, the songs have said what they said. Now this this will be more of a concrete way. Of, of, you know, saying... It almost kind of reminds me, even though it's not an exhibit, but what Peter Asher has done. I mean, Peter does his concerts. He talks about his life. That's, that, that's, that's a good, that's an excellent point. You know, that's, he doesn't put out his own memoirs. He likes to go out and perform, do the songs from his past, the Peter and Gordon stuff, later material, talk about his work as a producer, instead of putting out his book. It's right. probably a now, lot easier for him to work on a book, and it's out there, and that's it. Now, on the other hand, Greg Lake is doing both. Greg Lake is putting out an autobiography and has just put out a CD, which goes through his career, and which includes a cover, a Beatle cover, because I've, I've just heard the CD. Uh, he does um, You've Got to Hide Your Love Away, and he also talks about touring with Ringo um, on Good. the CD. So if you're interested in in that, um, there's you know uh, you might want to pick that up. I actually wish there was a book on the All Star Band tours, because well, we've, we've had all <laughs> we we've had all these great lineups. You know, even just a photo book would be phenomenal. Right. Well, who you knows? Know. Maybe Genesis. Maybe he'll do one with Genesis. Like, I mean, that would be that would be a good idea. Yeah. To do one to. And and that would be very likely for him to do something like that. But anyway, I mean, getting back to this, I'm really glad to see Ringo, you know, getting the spotlight for a change. I think he, you know, he very well deserves it. And again, you know, I'm glad that the the drumming, his drumming, is getting spotlighted, not just you know him. Hmm. Uh, you know that 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 is part of his. That's that's part of the, this exhibit. Is it well? It should be right. It's also interesting to me to know, with all four of the Beatles, how much they even cared about keeping anything from those days. You know, because who's to say they didn't know when they first hit it big that they would become this big part of history? It's one thing to have success as it's happening mm -hmm. and to enjoy it. You, you don't know ten years from now, forty years from now, fifty years from now, people are going to look back at all that music and know what a big part of music history and our culture the Beatles became. Right. So they didn't have to keep their clothes, <laughs> anything from that time period, their musical instruments, but, the, but in many cases they did. And we already know from postcards from the boys, you know, certain examples from different Beatles over the years. There was that one interview that I saw recently, and I think it was from Beatles Stories from Seth Swirsky, Mm -hmm. The one that Dave Edmonds was talking about, spending time with George one night. And George showed him all of his clothes from the Beatle days, and he got to try them on. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, so just the mere fact that George kept it. I'm glad that Ringo is doing this now. I mean, I'm glad Ringo is, is, going, is, is putting his, you know, his history out there, and, and he cares enough to do that. Yeah, another thing that it's, it's a little bit surprising to me is that because I've heard for quite a while now that the Beatles and Apple are very image conscious and they don't want to hammer in this idea that the Beatles happened so many years ago, that the Beatles themselves, like Paul and Ringo, even though they play a lot of Beatles stuff in concert, there's kind of no way they can avoid that. Right. They don't want to have to 
really rely on that time or talk about that time too much. They try to keep themselves in the present, right. even though Especially it's it's practically unavoidable. Especially Ringo. Yeah, Ringo. You know, you can ask a few questions about the Beatles, but you got to talk about the new CD or the new, the new product, whatever it is. Ringo, I think more than Paul. Paul seems to be more willing to talk about, and he. I mean, he often goes off on, on you know when he was with the Beatles, blah 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 blah. You know, Sometimes and, and I think he relies on it to help sell his records. Probably. You know, too much. Probably. As a matter of fact. That's probably true, probably true. But, you know, you don't see Paul doing an exhibit like this because it's almost, I don't want to say it's like a concession to I'm just a part of the past now, I'm all nostalgia, you know. I think Paul still wants to think of himself as a current artist, which he is, still a viable artist out there putting out, putting out important music for today. Well, he, he resisted the, he turned down the... Um the uh, lifetime award, or the uh, award from the, um, the the one in Washington, the John Kennedy Award, the Kennedy yeah Kennedy Center. He turned down the Kennedy Center awards the first time around, and it was and actually there was a lot of there was a lot of shock at the time that he de- actually did that because but he had you know he didn't feel like he wanted to get pegged into that kind of a thing, and then finally he decided to to do it and. I mean, I'm glad he did, and and he should he, he shouldn't have turned it down the first time because it doesn't necessarily. I mean, it's more actually more a tribute than anything else. It's not right. trying, to, trying to pigeonhole you as as being old and past your. Well, you know, there old. are some people who think that. Right. When you and get I a lifetime achievement award, it's at the end of your career. And I think Paul Paul is one of those that that feels that, and he's very he doesn't really care for that kind of stuff apparently, and you know that's fine. Um, I mean, on, just just on this very same subject, even though Beatle fans are aware, and many of them post it online on Facebook or Twitter or whatever, the 50th anniversaries of all these things, you don't hear Paul and Ringo talking about that. They stay away from that. It's a reminder of how long ago it was. Mm-hmm. So for me, seeing Ringo do something like this, but this is something that's different because it's it's encompassing his entire career. If you're also talking about a solo career and, and the history with the All-Star Band Tours, and I hope there's a lot from there in this exhibit, that's an ongoing thing. So he's embracing everything that he's done. Mm-hmm. It's not just, you know, I'm Ringo, I was a Beatle, here's all my Beatle stuff. So the mere fact that he's, he's combining everything, even pre-Beatles, is something that, that I welcome. You know, I think that's a great idea. Right. Yeah, I, I I I agree with you completely there. I think uh, it's fantastic that that this is happening, and uh, it's going to be exciting to see that stuff. Um, and I think that's, I mean, obviously that's going to be a big attraction. But it's just great to have Ringo celebrated, and I and it'll be good to see, for example, how much stuff they uh, dig up from the All Star Band. How much you know? Because uh, I think if it hadn't dawned on people or it hadn't really made an impression i think when uh, lamon helm passed away everybody kind of looked back at the all-star band and and went you know there's some good there's some good things happening here hmm. and um well there's a number of all-star band members that have passed away well but i mean i think the lavon helm thing really kind of um focused in on how good some of those all-star bands have been and they have been, and and I'm not just talking about the first one, which is the one that everybody points to and says, "That's a really good band." Uh, oh, you know, I, there, they're there not were some great the, bands. I mean, one they're, of the ones all I, great one bands, I really. Like was the one with um, with Greg Lake. I'm talking about Greg Lake, yeah, where he had Ian Hunter and Howard Jones and 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 Sheila E. Who, if there's going to be a vote for the most valuable player for the All Star Band. Outside of Mark Rivera, you have to give it to Sheila. She was just awesome, and I really hope at some point she go, she does that to her again because she was just fantastic to watch. I I love seeing her. She just energized that that tour, the tours that she did with him. Uh huh. Well, I like all the members, but I do like that tour the most. But, oh you know, really? Okay. Oh yeah. You know, Roger Hodgson was in it. You mm-hmm. know, I think he's one of the greatest singers ever. <laughs> I also like, voice. I mean, I, I could go through a couple of them. I mean, I, I, I like the, the one with Fram, Peter Frampton, 
because as it turns out, I went to see Frampton when he was when back when he was supporting uh, John Mayall, and uh, he was still basically unknown, and um, and that was just he was just fantastic. There's the there, he tells the story, uh, and I believe and I'm pretty sure I was at that show where he played at Winterland, and one of the, uh, somebody had a sign that said, "We're here to see you, Peter," and that apparently really got to him, and he he had never forgotten that. And uh, so the Peter Frampton, you know, when he had Peter Frampton, it was great. And I think that was the same tour he had Gary Brooker. And I remember Ringo coming out and introducing Whiter Shade of Pale and just just really, really celebrating Gary Brooker. And that was just fantastic. But there were just so many, there were so many, I mean, you could, we could talk all day about how great the All-Star Man has been. And, I, and oh, we've done that, yeah. you know, in an early ep- ep- episode of the series. And I don't, you know. But, that's several shows worth of... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, it, it really of recording it really here, is. but yeah, I mean the the All Star Band is, is a is a worth celebrating, and and now that he's you know he's put so many of those bands together, it really has you know people are appreciating them more, and and it's not just a kind of a carnival thing, where you know a traveling circus type of thing, you know the All Star Band is really uh, a great idea and. It was a great idea, and it still is a great idea. It's never lost its luster for me, because what keeps it interesting is that he always adds new members every time. Right. So you yeah. never, you kind of know what they're going to do, because they, they kind of keep it safe with their hits, but just to know that Ringo's going to drum behind songs that you've never seen him drum behind before, that alone is worth going to see him. Right. And, I, you know, I kind of wonder, uh, uh, they, uh, they, used, uh, they added a new song this year, the first time uh, they had a brand new song in the in the set list, and I'm still wondering what the what the reasoning for that one was. Um, you mean the the Pacific Rim tour? Well, no, they did it here too. They did you it mean here too. Richard um, Page did a song that was a fairly new song. I think when that's I saw the one. Him. I think yeah, that's the one I believe I'm referring to is the Richard Page song. But I'm saying that was not a that was not a hit. Right. That broke that broke the mold mm-hmm. from the from the usual, you know, all hits all the time formula. Right. And that was kind of a surprise that he would, that uh, Ringo would actually allow that. And uh, and I'm still wondering, you know, if that's going to lead to, if that was just an experiment to, you know, lead to for new songs or just to, just something different to do. Or, or if Ringo just liked the song. Or it might have just been something to make sure that that he had three songs to do. Depending upon how that's, many other songs the other musicians had, that's a that's a thought too. That's an interesting idea. Yeah, too. I, yeah. We should point out that um, after this exhibit ends in Los Angeles at the Grammy Museum, there are plans for it to go to other cities. Yeah, and I, I it will be interesting to see if that actually happens because I, you know, that's things like that are are said and sometimes aren't fall and don't happen. But I hope. You know, obviously that that would be that would be a lot of fun to to go see that in, in other cities. So I'm hoping. I mean, it, it it would be a natural at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oh yeah, and I I you can pretty much guarantee that's where it'll go. That's at least one of the places it'll go. Sure. And just for those, I know that we we touched on this before, and you just did a, a few moments ago. That the ones that have been shown so far on John Lennon that I've seen at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and there was one at the Hall of Fame Annex in New York that only ran briefly. They're just wonderful. I mean, it's not just it's not just all the artifacts and everything. There's so much about their careers that are captured. Uh, when I saw the one on John at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, it was three floors of Lennon mm-hmm. stuff, including one full floor of handwritten lyrics, which wow. I'm a real sucker for. Now, and, see, the, the Granny Museum had all of that tucked into a tiny little space for John. Hmm. It was not three floors. It would have been, that would have been, I would have enjoyed that immensely. But no, it wasn't three floors. And did you go to the the annex one? Yes, I did. Now, see, that one, the description, I, uh, uh, what I saw of that one, that one just floored me. I mean, that was just a mind blower. It was a lot less than the one in Cleveland, but it really had a New York angle to it. Right. More about his life here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... um but that there's there was so much there. It was done so lovingly 
the one that was three floors. Well, so was the one in New York, too. And actually, one of the years that they ran the John Lennon one, simultaneously they had a Stu Sutcliffe exhibit, oh, which yeah. was really small. It was in a small room. His artwork mm. was shown there. But to, to be able to see both at the same time, which I did, boy, what a treat that was. Especially if I, you're not used to seeing Stu's paintings. Right. Okay, so that puts this show to a close. Again, this uh, Ringo exhibit called Ringo Star Peace and Love. Peace and Love, Peace and Love. <laughs> I actually like the photo that they show of this, yeah. which is of a current Ringo carrying the Ringo from the Magic Christian. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, I thought that was kind of funny, too. Actually. It's very clever. Mm-hmm. And it'll start June the 12th, and you said it'll run through November? That's yeah, the, plan? the plans are to run through November. So if you are in Los Angeles, make sure you try to check that out. Yep. Okay, the, so... Uh, admission, the admission prices, are, are, which I listed in the article, are, are re- very reasonable. $13 for adults, which is, considering some of the prices you can pay to go see things in Los Angeles, that's pretty damn reasonable. Mm. Okay. I'll have to make it a point to go visit in the area and, and see this, and then see you. Well, actually, I am going to try and get down there at some point, either in June or July. Obviously, if there's a an opening event, I'm going to get down there for that. But um, I'm going to try and get down there this summer and, and see that. So definitely, I'm definitely, I should say definitely, I'm definitely going to make it down there for that. So Okay. So if any of you would like to get in touch with us, you can always email us at the following address. It's things we said today, radio show at gmail.com. If you want to get in touch with Steve, tell him, Steve. You can, you can catch me on Facebook. I have my own little Facebook page. You can email me at BeatlesExaminer at gmail.com. You can always catch me on, my, on examiner.com on my Beatles Examiner page or my other uh, Examiner pages that cover uh, McCartney, uh, George Harrison, and Ringo. I'm all over. <laughs> I'm everywhere. Too. That's right. You can't get rid of him. Can't get rid of me. He's like a virus. Well, let's not go that far. <laughs> and if you want to get in touch with me, my email address is everylittlething at att.net. You can also friend me on Facebook under the name Ken Michaels, though I will have one for the show, Every Little Thing, very soon. And you can also look at my website, which is KenMichaelsRadio.com. Lots of interviews with people connected to the Beatles on there, including... Uh, my 1992 interview with Tony Sheridan, which is up there. One I did recently with Todd Rundgren. Also, uh, just recently, Jim Bergenstadt, the author and, of The Beetle Who Vanished, all about the life of Jimmy Nickel. And don't forget that uh, you can pick up the show on iTunes. Just do a search for Things We Said Today on podbean.com. And we're also broadcast on fab4radio.com on the weekends. That's right. Thanks to fab4radio.com for carrying us. So we're 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 all over, and we'll hope you. We hope you will listen and download the show and take it with you. And if you have the, uh, I know if you have the podcast uh, app on uh, on your Apple device, you can take us with you. So, all right. So thanks to all of you for listening, and we'll see you next time. See you next time.